Greetings everyone. I'm going to share a story with you and I honestly wish the lady could have built the courage to tell her own story because to be truthful, the way I'm going to tell it is not going to give justice to the way she told it to me. But I'm going to do my best. If you're listening, I'm going to do my best to tell your story. Now, this is related to a Jamaican man who met a woman who lives in England. The lady met him on social media. He reached out to her and she just fell in love with his charm and his personality. The very early stages of their friendship, um, let's just say they met in November of 2019 and by February of 2020, she would have already gone on a trip to see him. Now, I'm using those dates as example. Just an example because um, I don't know when the lockdown happened, but this is before the lockdown. And so she met this man and he was so charming and she said he filled all those check marks, all the things that she was looking for in a partner. He just seemed to fill it so much. They just hit it off right away. Well, you know, as women, some of us, you know, we are nurturers and so we often take that part of our character trait and we try to apply it to situations like men in our relationship we immediately even before we get to know them we want to start taking care of them so she said that you know he was meeting all her needs and she felt a great empathy for him because he you know nothing was happening for him not not Guan, as she said and so she said in the beginning he told her that he was having some problems with his eyes and she sent him money to get his glasses. Then she found out that he was married to someone from the United States because he was living there before and they deported him to Jamaica. And so it, she gave him money to take care of the divorce because now things are getting serious before, between them and they're, and they're planning to get married. And so she sent money. <clears throat> After she sent the money later on, he said that the money that she sent was not enough to get the divorce because um, he had to use a legal aid lawyer. So if he wants the divorce to be fast, he would have to pay another lawyer, which it cost over a hundred thousand. And she sent that. And um, you know, his car engine broke. And then he was also buying and selling. So she sent him barrels with things that he could sell. And then he was having a problem, some injury he had on his leg. One day he was just walking and out of the blues he just fell. Another day he got up, he couldn't breathe and they had to call the ambulance and take him to the hospital. And the man had one story after the other and she just kept, you know, sending more money, sending them more money. She just felt like this man was really a very unfortunate person with these unfortunate events occurring in his life. She said when she went to Jamaica... You know, she'd take him out for dinner and they go for breakfast. And he was not really interested in doing anything at home. And she says, as far as the romance was concerned, she said she had a chance to see the, the sugar cane. And it was not measuring up to her expectation, but, but because his personality is so nice. She said when the time came for them you know to walk in the garden of eden the sugarcane stub was so short and it took him like hours to get it out to roll it down i don't know what kind of sugarcane thing this is but that was her expression or explanation for how things went so it took so many hours to get this stump working that she decided that it's best that they just continue walking to the garden of eden just holding hands because there's more to life than you know releasing any type of physical activities within the garden after all it was forbidden in the garden of eden so she accepted that's not supposed to happen and his character and his nature was so beautiful. She was willing to ignore that for a moment. And so she came back. Keep in mind, she was quite disappointed that it had taken him so many hours to release the king, you know, on her trip to Jamaica. But she just said, there's more to life 
than drinking sugarcane juice. And so she returned. When she came back, he told her that his grandmother died. And she sent money for that. And then she found out that one of his aunts perished in a fire. And he, she sent money for that. Now you're going to say to yourself, at what point would this lady, who is in, by this time in her mid-50s, not realize that this young buck was really taking her to the cleaners? She just couldn't see past. It's almost like she was mesmerized by this person. And I'm going to use this as a segue to say this is very common. So many women are having these experiences. And you will say, well, I'm not feeling sorry for this person because what are you thinking? What, where is your state of mind that you would allow yourself to be exploited this way? What is it? Because in her case, she was not getting any coconut juice. She was not getting no coconut milk. She was not eating any sugar cane. She was just not having any of that. All she was having is the idea of what could possibly be down the road in terms of a permanent partnership with this one. These young bucks nowadays, they're fierce. And some of these men have zero conscience some of these men and listen i said some some of these men are playing the fields they got a lady in england they got one in america they got one in canada they have one wherever somebody is that is desperate enough to deal with their nonsense now I know what it's like to be in a long distance relationship. And I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. That when I was in it and I was living a distance from my partner, I never sent money to him unless it was to do a business for me. Or if my child was spending time with her dad, I, as a mom, I got my part of the responsibility to make sure that she has food and what she needed for her survival. I was also not with someone who would ever call me and ask, but I am terrible when it comes to certain things. I'm also of the mindset that if you're in Jamaica or if you live in Africa and you're a man, I don't care who you are. It's your responsibility to take care of your woman and your children. It's not something where you should be giving me. We can work together as a team, but I don't play the game where some big, strong man is going to be using me or exploiting me i'm not going to be giving anything to a man and i'm not doing that for myself and so you got women out here who you know are working so hard doing some very difficult jobs and when they get their paycheck they're going out and they're buying these designer things for men and they can't even afford to buy something simple and decent for themselves when my partner was in Jamaica, I remember this lady came to me and told me that I should send Barrel home with designer stuff for my man. And I'm saying, why would I do that when I'm not buying designer stuff for myself or for my children? As much as I like nice things, I buy what I can afford. And there's no way I was going to go out there and buy designer labels for my partner to do what? To set up the idea with him that this foreign place that I live is a bed of rose and everything is easy. When my partner entered this space, he came here with realistic expectations of what foreign is. So if I was going home, I had a budget and I was not going past $100 when I was bringing something for my partner. And I'm going to say to a lot of these women who cry out that they're being abused... Or they got exploited that you played that hand. You allowed yourself to be used. So while she was telling me, to be honest with you, I couldn't help. I was cracking up. She's a comedian without even realizing. She was angry and she was very hurt. And I, I hear her. But women, you have to get sensible. Be smart. You're making these choices with your finances. 
you're doing these things with your money and then later on you feel so hurt so re dejected listen it's not like the past where women were the ones who were just going out there and just conning men because women do that yes and they still do but a lot of older men who choose to date these young girls they don't mind using their money to get these girls so it's not exploitation as much as it used to be but nowadays the young bucks i'm telling you they're acting sometimes like girls and they will lie and they will tell you some stories i've seen i've heard i've witnessed this on the jamaican soil with the men a lot of men are different these days they have the attitude of women and again not all Jamaican men. You have these hardworking, ambitious Jamaican men. When their women come to Jamaica, they sponsor that trip. They take care of her. We're not mixing these kind of men. We're talking about the men with the tight up pants. And, you know, when you look at the end, you can't tell it different from that of a woman. No, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I'm saying these older women that are dating these young bucks and, um, you know, taking them here and there and putting them in a five-star hotel and buying these expensive clothes for them and fail to understand that if you're older age some people say is a number i think people can fall in love with anybody as long as two persons are adults two persons are old enough to decide they want to enter into a relationship with each other i think it's fair game as far as i'm concerned so if you're a male and you're older and you want to date a younger girl i have no problems if you're happy you're happy if you're female and you want to date a younger guy no problem for me but common sense must dictate your action and you can't always do these things you send thousands of dollars take out loan buy a vehicle for a guy who's not even using it to make money and when you go home he can't even treat you to a night's dinner who are you going to blame but yourself and so whether the candy stick is sweet or the candy stick is just virtually useless, there's nothing you can do about it but take responsibility for your own side of things or your action. Okay? And so I'm sorry for what you went through. I'm sorry I laughed so hard. I have not laughed so hard because of how you told your story. But I'm going to say, listen, learn from your mistakes. Move on. Stay blessed, everybody. Bye.